Hi guys, welcome back. I know it's been a while. I am so sorry. We have just been so busy. The month of May has just been crazy for both of me and my husband's work and we've had some visitors and there's just been so much going on. I have been meaning for so long to get this minimize update video out for you guys and I'm, I'm so sorry that it's just now coming out for you, but we're not done with the whole minimalism journey. I wanted to address a few things, address some of the questions that you guys have, and also just kind of sit down and explain why we wanted to do this, how it has changed our lives, how we are maintaining it throughout our home, and just some overall updates about our minimalism journey. So I am so excited to just kind of sit down and get in detail and just share all of this from start to finish with you guys. And yeah, it's been a long time coming for this video, um, but let's get into it. We are gonna finish getting ready real quick and then we're gonna start the day. I have just been finding recently that if I get ready, I'm so much more productive than if I were to not. Look at the difference between my um, eyebrows. This one just looks so much sharper and just more wispy and natural. And then this one is like, Bleh. Anyways, this is the Eyebrow Enhancing Gel by Dime Beauty. And they are actually sponsoring today's video, <laughs> which is funny because I didn't plan this out. I just actually use their products all the time. So I'm so excited to be working with them for today's video. If you don't know about Dime, let me just run through my favorite products with you really quick. They're absolutely amazing. Dime Beauty offers luxury skincare, beauty, and wellness products all at affordable prices. So I always use this eyebrow enhancing gel right after I do my eyebrows, like after I fill them in when I'm doing makeup. And this actually comes in a kit. The Ultimate Power Couple this month is this kit. It's called the Boost Bundle, which contains the eyelash boost serum and the eyebrow enhancing gel. And I absolutely love both of these products. So this eyelash boost serum is an affordable lash serum that lengthens and thickens lashes for a longer duration. This just improves the length and thickness of your eyelashes. And I also use this on my eyebrows too. I can kind of get some bald spots in my eyebrows sometimes and the serum just helps fill them in. I have a whole bunch of their serums. I have the Hyaluronic Acid Serum, the Hyper Glow Serum, and then the Super Firm Serum. Honestly, I love all of them. I think my favorite one is the Hyper Glow Serum, especially for the summertime. The Hyper Glow Serum contains 20% vitamin C and other free radical fighting ingredients. It helps lighten all your dark spots and just even out your complexion and it just gives you that subtle, summery glow without making you look oily. It's perfect. If you're interested in checking out Dime Beauty, I actually have a discount code so you can save some money. Just type in KenzieYT25 for 25% off at checkout. I will also leave a link that you guys can click on down below in the description box so you can check out all of my favorite products and also just Dime Beauty in general. They have so many products for so many different skin types and I just highly recommend them. Definitely go check them out. I got my coffee from yesterday, <laughs> but it's better than nothing. Okay. okay, so I wrote everything down on my phone because there's just so much that I wanna talk about today and I don't wanna forget anything. So I know the word minimalism can be really scary and I want to just talk about that for a second. Let me just start off by saying that I would not consider myself a true minimalist. I wouldn't consider my family to be minimalist. I've just found that practicing minimalism or simple living is the easiest way to live for our family. I know the word minimalism can be really scary, but it's really not what it seems. Minimalism literally just means living with simplicity and you can interpret that however way you want to. And for me, it's just finding an easy way to help maintain a clean, healthy living environment. Before we started this journey, I feel like we were always just kind of living in a constant state of stress and overwhelmed by all of the clutter that was in our house. I was noticing that it would take me hours and hours to clean the house each day and I wouldn't want to clean the house so I wouldn't and so stuff would just pile up and it would get worse and worse and it was just so overwhelming that it became such a chore to maintain a clean home or to pick up after myself. So I've talked about this briefly before on my channel but I 
struggle with anxiety, ADD, depression, and uh, especially after my kids, it's gotten 10 times worse, um, just being in the postpartum stage and whatnot. And yes, although I take medication for all that stuff and it helps tremendously, I notice that if my environment isn't where it needs to be, then those medications do nothing for me. My mental health literally just spirals down the drain. So my family was basically living in a constant state of mess. And because of that, I was in such a funk for months. My mood was very down. I was not happy. Even though I'm living in my dream home with my dream family and everything that I could ever ask for, there was still something that was weighing me down and making me feel like I wasn't truly living my best life. Once I realized that it was literally all of the things in my house, the physical things that were actually weighing me down, it just changed my life. So at the beginning of 2023, I knew that I wanted to just start fresh with my house and declutter. And I knew that I was gonna make it into a series on YouTube, I just had no idea how deep it was gonna go and how far I was gonna minimize my house, if that makes sense. I knew that I was gonna declutter, but I didn't know how much I was gonna declutter. And so I started off with the kitchen and that was the first thing that I did and I went in guns blazing. I got rid of three giant containers of just random like appliances that we didn't need, any spatulas, cups, any extra plates and I will have to say it felt so good when I was done with it I felt like I had completed my entire house I was so happy with myself I was so happy with the amount of stuff that I was getting rid of that it almost felt like a high that I needed to just keep going and that's exactly what happened and that's exactly what I did but I wanted to touch on that because it's hard work. There is a lot that goes into this and after you do half of a room, even one cabinet, you're sweating. I, at least for me, I'm huffing and puffing and it's hard. It's a workout and it's definitely something that you need to have time and commitment to. Another tip I have is do not try to do it all in one day. I promise you, you will not declutter, at least for the first time that you're decluttering your house, you will not get it done all in one day. It's probably gonna take a lot longer than you're anticipating, but the end result is just so worth it. I took my time throughout this entire process. I decluttered my entire house over the span of a few months, and I did that because I didn't wanna overwhelm myself with the amount of work that I was giving myself. I also wanted to keep my pace so I didn't get sick of it and give up in the middle. But with that being said, when I started a project, I finished that project that day. For example, the kitchen, I did in one day. I carved out one day, but I made sure to finish the entire kitchen that day or else the kitchen will never fully feel complete because I feel like I wouldn't actually finish it the next day. So yes, I made sure to divide up my times by individual rooms, but I also made sure to give myself a time limit for those individual rooms so it didn't get drug out and so I'd actually get each room done. You should also adjust it to the way that your own family lives. So the way that my family is going about this whole minimalism journey should be a lot different than what you guys are going through. For example, me and my husband are DIYers. We love to do big projects ourselves. We love to attempt to build anything ourselves. Therefore, we have a whole bunch of tools in our garage and those tools do take up a lot of space and can almost feel like clutter but I'm reminding myself that we use these tools every day and these tools actually are serving a purpose for our family at this stage in our life so I choose to keep the tools but eliminate the things that we aren't using in our garage so we can make room for these new tools I just suggest to take away the stuff that is just taking up clutter in your house so you can make room for the things that you are using on an everyday basis and that you truly need for your family and for your lifestyle now I'm gonna address a few questions that I am always getting so the first question is how do you get rid of stuff so easily and this question has a few parts to the answer to it so I haven't always been able to get rid of stuff so easily like I do now when I was little I was definitely more 
I don't want to say a hoarder, but I was definitely more emotionally attached to my things than I am now. Kind of steering away from that emotional attachment has been one of the biggest things that I've had to overcome throughout this whole decluttering journey. I love my stuff. I feel like if my stuff is in my home, then it's a part of my family. And so trust me, I can understand why it can get hard to let things go, especially when it comes to those more sentimental things and things that are more special to you that might be harder to get rid of. So growing up, I've had to really teach myself how to not get such a strong emotional attachment to my things. At the end of the day, things are just things and that's all that they will be. The most important things that matter in life are not things, they're experiences, memories, family, love. And you truly do have to keep that in mind when you're getting rid of things. I also have a good rule of thumb when I am trying to get rid of something specific. If I haven't used it in the past few months, especially the past year, I don't need it, it's gotta go. At that point, it's just sitting in the back of the closet, taking up your space, and it's manipulating your mind and your stress levels, and there's just no reason to have something extra that you are not gonna use. And honestly, if you're like me and you get an emotional attachment to things and it's hard for you to let things go, then think of it this way. Someone else is gonna use that thing a lot more. That item is gonna be so much happier getting used by someone else than it is gonna be sitting in the back of your closet just collecting dust and just being clutter. Another question I always get is, do you regret getting rid of anything? And I can truly say that no, I have not regretted one thing. If you really feel like you're regretting an item or you're missing out on an item that you had given away last year, that means it's important enough to you to spend your time, your money, and your effort to go and get it again. Personally, that's never happened to me before, but that's just kind of my mindset about it. If I really missed it, then I'll go and get it again. I've gotten so many questions on asking me, how do I start? I have a house full of stuff and I wanna declutter my entire house, but I don't know which room to start in. I don't know where to start and I just need help. I suggest to definitely start at a place that's not gonna be super messy and overwhelming to you. For example, I just started in my kitchen because my kitchen isn't like a giant pile of mess like my coat closet or the playroom closet or even my master closet upstairs. It wasn't super overwhelming and it was just kind of straightforward. You would open each cabinet, take everything out, go through it and put it back in. So it was kind of just a straightforward process. Another thing that you can do if you're feeling really overwhelmed, start going through and taking away all of your duplicate items. If you have five of the same flathead spatulas, honey, you do not need that. If we had any extra place settings or bowls or forks, cups, any duplicate item, we made sure that we only had one of. Eliminating all of the items that you have double of automatically declutters your home, but you're not feeling too overwhelmed and scared because you still have another one of those items left in the drawer. I know you still have another spatula. It's fine. As for sentimental things, I know that this can be really tricky. My husband's mom passed away when he was little, so he has quite a few of her things that are more on the sentimental side that remind him of her and that we love, we cherish, and that we are gonna keep. I can promise you that any memories, pictures, anything in here is gonna be so much more sentimental than an item that you never use, never pick up, and is just gonna sit there and get dusty. And yes, if you feel like you need to hold on to a physical item, that is sentimental to you, by all means do it, but you don't need an entire room or even an entire house full of stuff that is not yours. Let's talk about how this whole journey has affected our lives, how it's helped us, how it has changed our lives for the better. So I would say the biggest change that I wasn't expecting to see, but I have and I'm so grateful for is the amount of money that we have saved. We are so much more thoughtful about what we are bringing into our home because once we're thinking about bringing something new into our home, we're thinking about how we can get rid of it as well. Is this gonna be an easy thing to declutter in two years? Are we gonna need this in two years? A lot of times when you sit back and think about what you truly need, you don't actually need it. Okay, I apologize if this looks a little bit different. My camera died, I'm using my phone now because 
we just got to get this done. I'm on a roll, okay? Honestly, I feel like we don't really spend money on too many physical items anymore unless it's something that has to do with our house or our home renovation. We budget so we don't buy these random toys and items that we don't need so we can actually spend it on something that we are going to use every single day like our patio fire pit area we're also saving our money for more life experiences instead of just buying something having that thing for a few years to probably just get rid of it in a year or two from now anyways Instead of doing that, we decide to save up and invest our money into vacations. Even if it's just something as little as going out to dinner with our family, we like to save our money and invest in experiences and things that aren't things, things that we are going to remember for the rest of our lives and actually have fun from. I noticed before I started this whole simple living journey that I was always searching for the next new thing. I was never truly content with where my life was at. I was always wanting something new and I was always just saying to myself, I wasn't gonna be happy until I get something new or until I get this new product or new thing. And then my brain would just get fixated on wanting that thing and my life wouldn't feel complete until I had that thing. And until I changed my entire perspective on how I see new things and want new things, I never truly felt satisfied with what I already had. I honestly feel like I could talk forever about this topic. I'm truly so passionate about it and our journey is definitely not done. We have come so far in this minimalism journey. I've decluttered everything in my house, but you guys, I can truly say that I am not done. We have done each individual room, but now I just wanna go back in and do another sweep through of the entire house. I feel like there's just more and more that we can keep going and keep getting rid of, and that's just gonna continue to make our lives easier. This isn't just a one-time process, this is a lifestyle change, and it's something that we're gonna have to keep up with and maintain ourselves. I will say that's definitely something that we need to get better on, is just keeping up with and maintaining a clean space. I just don't like cleaning, so I've just come to realize that the less stuff that I have, the less you have to clean and it truly is that simple but it's also so much easier to clean when you just keep picking up after yourself and you keep up the maintenance of cleaning and that is something that i had to realize i think that i was a little bit shocked to find that after i got rid of all my stuff i still had to clean up my house to make it look decent and I guess I didn't really realize that when I first started this journey that yes, you have to change your mindset too on how you go about things, how you put stuff away in your house, how you clean your entire house. It's a process for your house, but it's also a process for you and your mindset as well. Make room for the things that are truly important to you, like your kids, your experiences and your memories and get rid of the things that are just taking up all of the clutter and just causing stress and a burden on your mind and your way of living. You don't need things to make you happy. In fact, the more things you have, the more depressed and down and in a funk you're gonna feel. Anyways, I could talk about this forever, but I would love to hear any additional questions that you guys have. I would love to have a chat with you in the comments. I love hearing about your guys' decluttering and minimalism journey for yourself too. I think it's so inspiring, but there's definitely many more videos like this to come in the future. So I'm so excited to bring you guys along for the journey with us. And if you are new here, I'd love to have you. Don't forget to subscribe and yeah, follow me on Instagram. I'd love to have you over there too. I am a lot more active every day over there and it's just easier for us to just connect a little bit on a deeper level. We can DM and you know. Also don't forget to check out Dime Beauty. I have a link for them down below in the description box. Make sure to say hi in the comments. I'd love to have a chat with you and we will see you in a few days in a new one. Bye.